Hey guys, this is your inspirational nurse underscore RN Tierra come to your live with another great video. Hello, all my inspirational nurses out there, all my YouTube family. I miss you guys so much. Your girl has been super, super, super busy. There's been some changes. <laughs> so this video is going to be super short and special. And it's six interviewing tips to help you get that dream job. So if you're interesting or maybe you're just looking to transition, um, I know so many nurses right now are transitioning from travel back into the workforce because travel and nursing is kind of like dying down. And there's some nurses that's on a full-time job they might be looking for another passionate place where they can grow or seek new ventures. So stay tuned if you're super, super interested in this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe, and share, and comment, guys. I love all seeing all your comments come in. I try to comment to everyone and give feedback. Um, it's good to hear from you guys. I feel like I have family <laughs> close by. <laughs> and so let's get started. So here are six great interviewing tips. Start with interviewing tip number one. So before you have an interview, the main tip is to have a great resume. So getting my bachelor's, what I learned is that they also prepare you to write a great resume. And what they do is they have a faculty member of the university or school that will actually go look at your resume from top to bottom and critique it. Um, now, if you have been working in field like me for a while, your resume probably is gonna look a hot mess and that is okay. Um, this is going to be your best tip. Now, what I also learned is that sometimes if you display certain things about your character, whether it's your age, gender, race, name, or just certain things, um, it can flag your resume. And so you do not want to be putting just any type of information on your resume. I even hear that sometimes if you're like older, um, that they discriminate against your age. So even though they shouldn't have they shouldn't because that's like against the law right to discriminate but you have companies or recruiters that will actually um look at that as a flag like oh so she's older so you know they're looking at that um so a great resume is always a stepping stone to having a great interview because it is your foundation it is who you are on a piece of paper keep in mind this resume needs to be short and display your most recent activities rather than having every last one of your activities on your resume. Now for me guys, I struggled rewriting my resume. I did not want to change it. It's been that way for so long. But I understand now the importance of having just a short and sweet, simple resume and the type of job that it does target. So since having my resume repolished and redone, I was able to obtain a management position. So, yes, and it happened very quickly. Um, just keep in mind that the recruiters or the HR um, person that is reviewing your, uh, your resume, which when I was managing, I was looking at resumes literally guys sometimes we have several people we're interviewing and so we do not spend a lot of time like reading every single word of your on your resume so just keep in mind we kind of scan through the document really quickly we first thing you're looking for is history um kind of like your most recent education or anything that was most recent instead of like five years back right so that's tip number one is to have a great resume Tip number two is you want to be prepared, guys. You want to be prepared for your interview. You want to make sure that you know exactly where you're going, who you're interviewing with, and what position you're interviewing for. Now, the way things are going, sometimes you just randomly might click a job and apply and not realize that, you know, they might want be interested in you. Um, and then when they're starting to ask questions, you're kind of like, looking around for answers you really don't know the answers to or you're trying to make stuff on on as you go so always be prepared when you're interviewing always look into the type of job you are um looking for the type of role you're willing you want to fulfill don't feel intimidated when you see um during their job descriptions that they're looking for preferred master's degree or required master's or bachelor's um, sometimes you are really, if you're really good at negotiating, you can get a job that you don't even have the qualifications for. 
right? God can always do that. God will always sometimes give you a job that you're not even qualified for yet, right? Because he knows that spiritually you are ready. So always be prepared. Tip number three. Now, this tip is very important. What I do is I always look up the job's description. When you look up the job description on the type of role you're looking to fulfill for the company, when they're asking you questions about this type of work, or you can have a description of what that role may look like for you, um, and you'll have an idea of what they do, right? So before I was an ADON, I looked up the job description for ADON, and I looked for key word, hot words that um, kind of like I can relate to um, that would help me to better answer the interview questions, if that makes sense. Um, like team player and um, compliance and safety and policies and procedures. And so certain keywords, look up your job description so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And also when I'm hired, that is the first document that I ask for because even if you don't stay with the company for long, when you go to your next job and they ask you what, what was your role in that position, you saved your job description papers, right? Now, I know it's a little old school, but it does help because instead of you trying to come up with words to describe what you just did, when you do when you work a lot, sometimes it's hard to put a lot of what you did into words, right? I don't know about you, but I know about me. Sometimes it's hard for me to put everything that I was doing in the management role uh, on paper. Like, literally, it's very challenging to put it in the right formatting, saying it the correct way, um, because I was just doing so much, right? So for me, I always save my job descriptions. So when I'm applying for the next one and they're saying, hey, um, write this down or I want to update my resume, I just copy off my job descriptions of what I was doing in that role and put on my resume. And then that would capture the attention of the next recruiter. So that is your tip. Now, moving on to the next tip. Now, so to prepare for the interview, always remember that the interview, is, this interviewer is interviewing your professional activity and your professional role, right? This is not an interview where it's more personal. So try not to get personal in, at your interview, meaning, oh yeah, I got like six kids. Uh, um, I live all the way here, I'm from Ohio, I am 65, like, don't get too personal when you're interviewing. Remember the interview is to get to know you professional on a professional level. So sometimes this is easy, like if you have a lot of anxiety and you tend to talk a lot or, you know, say too much than you need to, I used to have a problem a lot, um, always keep in mind that they're asking you about your professional life. What, is, what does that look like as a nurse, your professional career thus far? Um, think like that before you answer a question. Think carefully before you answer a question because sometimes saying one wrong thing can actually cause a red flag. Um, and the team does discuss like the people that we do interview. I know when we were interviewing people, which I love managing guys, we I interviewed people that was working in factories and um, was dollar general managers and things like that these people have never worked with people in the healthcare field before so questions for me was just trying to get to know them where they're at in their professional life like even if it was like management like how did you deal with problem solving and you know things of that nature so that is just another tip guys Another great tip with interviewing is make sure that you look presentable. Um, make sure, and when I mean presentable, now we always hear this when we're, we've been learning this in school, right? That every time they tell you go on a resume, they want you to look your best. I have interviewed people that were in like, like club outfits and long, like long wigs with long, long, long nails and like piercings everywhere. And it, I interview people with like sh cut short uh, shirts that were like cut low. And you know, some people don't have interviewing clothes. So my best tip is when you do not have interviewing clothes is to go to your local Goodwill or secondhand shop. Now I know for some people out there like, nah, I ain't doing that. But let me tell you, they have nice 
nice business casual wear. You'll find like name brand um, business wear in your secondhand or your Goodwill facilities. Um, and I go to Goodwill a lot, a lot guys, and that I have found. If I wish I would have made a video of what I'd be finding, and and, and because of my area is upscale area. The stuff is amazing, y'all. Just so amazing. So if you don't have it like that said, like have a nice three-piece suit or like a nice business casual wear. Because I know sometimes we wear scrubs a lot. Now, some people wear scrubs to their interview. I still like to do the traditional way and wear um, like regular business casual clothing. Um, depending on my role. Like, if I'm going to work in a regular hospital, I know that that might be okay, but I still wear regular business casual wear. I still do it because remember that when you're putting on those clothes, you're not just impressing yourself because you want to look good, right? You're impressing the team, the professional team. So you want to look presentable. You don't want to have too much colors in your hair. You know, you don't want to have like, you know, you're looking, you're not smelling well, good or you're in your hygiene. You're not taking care of your hygiene before the interview. You're just running from one, you know what I mean? So this is really your first impression. So you really want to make a really good first impression. And like I said, if you don't have the to go and get like expensive clothing, go to Goodwill. Goodwill have like button up shirts all colors vests the blazers the suit jackets the pants the shirts the skirts um because everyone is looking and sometimes when you when i know as a manager we were when we interview somebody we do discuss it all together um as a team and say and we already know sometimes who we like who we you know what's most impressive to the team and who was not um sometimes it's really easy and even when you're young and you think oh because you're in nursing school and you want to just get in the field that you could just get the job sometimes that's not always the case sometimes you don't get the job because there was something that you mentioned or something that you said that they're looking at long term like is this person going to be with us long term or they're just looking for somewhere to be for like two weeks or three weeks you know i had somebody came to me and was like hey i want to work for you guys because you guys are training cnas and getting them certified but i live all the way in florida and i'm just a traveler like looking you know like so be mindful of what you share when you're interviewing try not to get personal try to just answer the questions that's being asked and not go beyond that unless you feel compelled to say hey look I don't meet your qualifications but this is what I do have and kind of like stick with the script <laughs> if that makes sense like if you like to talk like me I love to socialize and get to know the team and everything like that every interview I had I 99% out of the time got the job and that's because I follow these tips um and I'm honest, if I don't have a certification that they're looking for, or, um, you know, when they ask me about to ask questions, uh, like if I have questions, I usually have a bunch of questions that I want to get answered. Um, and that's always usually very impressive to the team because usually when you ask somebody, they're like, no, I don't. And they're like, well, you don't have not a question about where you're about to work. <laughs> So that also can tell, you know, also the people who's interviewing you can tell, like, if you're very interested or you're not, and you're just looking for something for a meantime. So just if you're something, I would, that's why I always influence or inspire people to go for jobs that they actually want to do, um, rather than just something to do, um, because you're wasting people's time and resources. Literally, because the, all the interviews we were having on top of everything we had to do as managers, like, I barely had time to even eat lunch because I was interviewing people back at the back, at the back, at the back. Now, some facilities actually have a script of questions that they want us to ask the candidate. And sometimes I will use that. And most of the time I will add a couple of questions if I know, like, this person doesn't have any experience at all or does have experience and kind of see like you know try to get to know 
the candidate in within a few minutes. Now, I always at the conclusion of the interview request a tour of the facility of or the unit that I'm going to be working. And that's just me because visually this is the time to look around and see the conditions that the building is in, the conditions that the unit is in. How many staff members do you see? Do you see enough nurses per unit? Do you see a nurse aide, nurse aides per unit? Or CNAs per unit? Did you see a manager? Like, I walked in some places that I interviewed and literally walked out and was like, I don't want this job because of what I was seeing. So it's so important to visually go and connect with the unit in a sense where when you're touring it, you know, you're looking for key features that a facility is supposed to have when running, you know, a legitimate business. So um, some people are don't care about all those details and they just want the job they need to pay some bills. And that's OK. There's no judgment. But for me, I need to see where I'm going to be working. I need to get a feel for the place. I need to see what the team is looking like, the team dynamics, um, you know, what might be some struggles for this facility, what they might need help with. Um, and then that will gear you to ask more questions before you sign your name on the dotted line. So keep in mind also that there's so many contracts and there's so many things that sometimes we miss when we're interviewing and then when we're getting hired during the onboarding process, um, like small fine prints that say, hey, you have to stay at this facility for two years or, you know, you lose your bonus or, hey, you have to sign this paperwork because of this. So make sure that you're asking questions before signing anything, before signing anything. When you're researching a facility, you want to look at the distance between your home and that facility. Are you comfortable with the distance between that home and that facility? You will ask about overtime. Is that something that's allowed? Um, salary. How does salary work? Is it bi-weekly? Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it whatever? You know, you need to ask questions because you'd be surprised when you don't and you start working. Um you'll be like, I didn't know that they do this and do that. I didn't know that they, and you do not want to start off like that at any job. So hopefully these tips were super, super helpful. Um, I'm currently had some changes. I was supposed to do this travel contract, but um, there was some things that I saw that I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so currently I had a, uh, phone interview today and a I'm waiting for another call to do the second part and then I will share that great news with you guys um so those are my interviewing tips um just keep in mind sometimes too depending on your position you might have to do a second part interview with a team or a group um of professionals that is on that team like I know sometimes when you do uh, group interviews, that might be a little bit intimidating because you might have the supervisors looking at you. You have this person looking at you. Um, and then random people just asking you random questions, which is called a panel interview. And I had that done when I worked at the hospital. They actually a panel interviewed me um, with several different managers. And, and each manager is able to give their feedback on, on the candidate, whether they want the candidate or not. So there's a lot of pressure on getting jobs now. And that's because there's a lot of things that are going on. And so these hospitals and recruiters, they're really trying to screen everything about you or learn as much about your professional career before they accept you into their company, right? Because people want to stay in business. They don't want to be sued by just hiring just anybody. And then you have those reckless jobs that just hire anybody. And then you notice there's always a high turnover rate. So pay attention to your turnover, your retention. Um, it's good to hear when you get ready to work somewhere and the nurses have been there for 20 years, 30 years, or they're getting ready to retire. You're like, okay, that is a good sign that means that the facility is running is a structured facility um but if you go somewhere and you notice that the job is really kind of easy to get and they kind of like didn't really explain things to you 
you kind of like, yeah, you'll get it when you come in. You'll figure it out. And like, just pay attention to the red flags. Don't annoy them. Don't put your license anywhere just because you need a job. God will always provide a job because we're nurses. We help people. So when you have a good heart, God will always provide a job. Food on your table, bills are going to be paid. So let's, don't worry about that stuff. Make sure you go where God wants you to go. So stay tuned for the next one.